Good morning, Horizon Church. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. My name's Kelsey. And my name's Joe Ash. And man, we are glad to be yes. back on pre-show. It's this is so been exciting. a while. It's yeah. been a while. Um, as you guys can see, just to kind of kick things off, it's been the end of summer. Yes, it or has. Or rather, the beginning of the end. As you guys can see, I hope you're enjoying the rain. Um, yeah. That's been great. It's been kind of cold, kind of gloomy, but... Yeah. It's okay. We're rolling with it. Welcome to fall. Come on, we're so excited. But hey, if you're joining us online this morning, we want to let you guys know about our amazing chat host. So if you're online at any point, we would love you for for you to be commenting in the chat. Our chat host would love to connect with you, answer any questions. And if you have any prayer requests, feel free to drop it in the chat. They would love to be praying with you during the service. Yeah, and if you're here in person, in service, or in Princeton, Hello, welcome to Sunday morning. We're so excited you're here. Um, If anything, say hello to the person beside you. Kind of chat a little bit. You guys got a little bit of time. (laughs) Why not? Um, But either way, welcome to everyone watching. We're so excited for the pre-show and for service. But as I said before, with prayer, so we've got prayer options for you guys online. You could just drop it in the chat. But here at Horizon, we believe that uh, value for us is prayer, that we yeah. are a people of, of prayer. prayer. So Come with on. that, we want to tell you guys about some prayer opportunities that we have throughout the week. Yeah. So the first one is on Tuesday nights, 7 p.m. Yes. Um, we're there consistently week after week. Yeah. We love to just pray, and that's going to be a time for you guys to join us. Yeah. Um, we'll pray for the nation, pray for our pastors, yes. we pray for the church. For any church needs, we just yeah. love to be people of prayer. So that's way we that's a way we love to do that. So you yeah. can either join in person. Yeah. Um, we're just gonna be in the where the kids is right now called the chapel. Yeah. Or if you don't want to be in person, you can also join online. Yes. Um, message prayer at Horizon Church. Um, to get a link for Zoom, and you can join that way as well. It's a great, great, great time, so definitely worth it. And if you're in Princeton as well, you can join us for prayer that way as well, because we want you guys to be part of it. We're one big church, and yeah. But hey, guys, today is the first Sunday of September, so that means that we've got communion. communion. So if you're joining us for communion in person, Surrey, make sure you grab your communion cup yeah. because you'll need it at the end of service. And Princeton, I think you are also getting communion cups ready for the end of service. Yeah. So other than that, it's going to be a great, great service. Yeah. We're so, so excited. But um, we will not delay it any further. Um, we got worship in the word. And yeah, that'll be it yes. for the pre-show. So good to see you guys. Bye. Good morning, family. Why don't you stand as we jump into worship this morning? This holy desire, it's getting better, just gets brighter. Can't hold out this fire. I just gotta live too higher. If there's ever been a time, the time is now. Right now, if there's ever been a day 
the holy name of Jesus.
just begin to sing of your thankfulness because he hasn't failed us before and he won't do it oh i bless the name of the lord sing your song to him who did all things creator savior friend oh how good you are we raise a song of thanksgiving to you
students going back, we've got teachers, we've got people who are transitioning into something new. So we're going to take a moment and pray for our students. We're going to take a moment and pray for our teachers and just pray that God would go with them in everything that they set their foot forward. So Jesus, we thank you that you're a faithful God. And so right now we pray for all the students, all the students that are going back to school. Father, we pray that you would go with them, that you would prepare the way in front of them, Father, that you would bless them as they go forward in everything that they do. You would bless them in their learning. You would bless them in their play, Father. Everything that they're doing, Father, you would bless them. We pray for the teachers this morning, Father. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon them, that you've given them the wisdom and the tools that they need for this next coming year to teach those students. We pray for those going back to university, Father. I thank you that you are going with them. Those who are worried about finances, I thank you that you're a faithful God. Those who are worried about what they're about to study, I thank you that you're a faithful God. We pray for the moms right now who are anxious about letting their little ones go back to school, Father. Would you give them peace and comfort in their hearts right now? We pray for those moms who are homeschooling. Give them all the wisdom they need to do that, Father. Give them creativity to teach their children, Father. We thank you that you're a faithful God and what we put our hand to, you will be, you will be with us. We look to you, Father, for all the answers in this next coming year. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. situations that are causing grief or anxiety. Holy Spirit, would you speak? Jesus is to step by faith 
into his security and out of your insecurity into the ways of Jesus. Specifically, there's someone, you're this morning, you're like, it's too far gone, Daniel. They're already gone or the situation's done. The relationship is gone. And this morning, I was just reminded of Mark chapter two, the first miracle that Jesus does. He stands and he takes water and he turns it into wine. And you might be sitting there today and say, Jesus, all I have is water. And he says, I don't need even a grape because I can speak things into existence that were not part of your situation and bring them into your situation this morning. Some of you, Jesus is asking you to step out of the logical part that stops you. Not that you need to shut off your logical brain to follow Jesus. I'm grateful that we can use it to follow Jesus. But it follows, it does not lead. I just wanna pray. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand if that's you, but if you know you've just been struggling with insecurity in God's ability or that he would want to do it in your life. I feel like just to pray and break that off of you that there's gonna be a new faith to believe Jesus for the impossible. So Holy Spirit, or for whoever that's for, God, I don't pray for a witty saying to make us feel better, Lord. I pray that the truth of your word would go deep into our hearts in this moment. That God, you don't need anything to bring everything into existence. So our situation, God, is no different. Where the enemy would cause us to focus on the impossibilities, Lord, would you help us set our eyes on you? to step into the security that is the person of Jesus, the final work of the cross that did not fail, nor will it ever. Jesus, I pray for new hope to arise in hearts where it's been a while. In the name of Jesus, we've asked these things according to your will, Father. Amen. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise this morning? Come on. Come on, not a short one. For 30 seconds, let's just begin to clap to thank Jesus for who he is. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy, God. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our adoration, God. Oh, you're sufficient, Father, in who you are. God, we give you our attention. We give you our praise. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Uh, my name's Daniel. If I have yet to meet you, I'm one of the pastors here at Horizon Church. I've seen a couple new faces today as typical of this uh, time and season with moving and transition, all that. So if it is your first time uh, here today, I would love just to uh, shake your hand and do my best to remember your name. Uh, if you'd like someone to remember your name, the man preaching today, once he hears it once, will never forget it, guarantee. If he does, he'll buy you a coffee. Um, but we're just so glad you're here at Horizon this morning. Um, yeah, thanks for being with us today. We know there's a lot of places uh, you could have chose to be this morning. If you're watching online, thanks for joining us. Princeton campus, man, we love you guys. So exciting today. Uh, today, actually, we have someone getting baptized in Princeton. Uh, with Pastor Jen. Come on. And Praxis. Uh, I'm sure we'll see a video of that later at, at some point uh, just to be able to celebrate that. But we love seeing what God is doing in Princeton. We love you guys. Uh, we are not envious of how much heat you get, but we do love you anyways. Uh, excited for that. We got a couple of things just for you to be aware of. Um, if you are new to Horizon over the next couple of weeks, there are just a few things you're going to be hearing about. It's kind of a, a time and season, as you're well aware, where things start up again, which will be fun. So I want to encourage you, if you're like me, guilty, when the announcement part is to quick check your Instagram, scan the room, see who's here, maybe take a quick bathroom break. I'm not hating on you. I'm with you. Uh, but for the next couple of weeks, make sure we're reading to the end of the email or listening to the announcements. I'm in it with you praying for strength and attention span to listen. But there will be a few awesome things that are happening. One, starting September 18th. Say September 18th. 
Apparently, if you say it, you're more likely to remember it. So there we go. Uh, we start our week of prayer and fasting, which is going to be a lot of fun. And so uh, I'm letting you know a couple weeks ahead of time, there will be a devotional that you can sign up for. The reason why we don't just send it out uh, is you're going to get an email every single morning. And if you got an email every single morning you didn't sign up for, you're likely to hit that little button at the bottom that says unsubscribe. So if you would like, we have a little devotional, some reading that we go through together as a church. would love to encourage you to sign up for that, and you'll get it in your inbox every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, for that week, which is going to be really, really exciting. Kelsey, did I forget anything else? Is that it? Oh, yeah, right. She's like, where? Where do I go? Thank you, our communications director, Kelsey. Come on, give a hand to Kelsey. She's the one that makes sure all your emails are spelled correctly and look beautiful. Thank you, Kelsey, for all you do. Um, Horizonfam.ca is where you can go to sign up for that. Uh, and if you wonder about ways to give, uh, this, I guess, is just a precursor. We're working on, if you've been here for a while, the buckets are returning, okay? And so in, as we kind of get back to different stuff like that, but currently, uh, if, as Pastor Craig talked about last week, if you want to be a part of seeing people find healing for yesterday, purpose for today, vision for tomorrow, giving's one of those ways that we worship and join in that. You can give online uh, at horizonchurch.ca or at horizonfam.ca, either one. Uh, you can uh, e-transfer giving at horizonchurch.ca or we have these wonderful, beautiful, like, wood edge things, little lights and an actual debit machine. I don't know how to use it, but there's, a, there's people back there that can show you how to do it if you like to give that way. But at this point, uh, we're going to invite up my good friend, and mentor, Pastor Michael Andre, to speak. Uh, thank you, Timmy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Uh, well, good morning, Horizon Church. God bless you today. And those of you in Princeton, a very good morning to you today. We have some very bright lights on me. And so I'm sure you can see me, but I'm not so sure I can see you. <laughs> and uh, for all of you who are joining online during the course of the week or whenever, we welcome you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what I'd like to do, if I may, just before we begin, I'd like to just welcome a few people uh, some precious people who are uh, visiting us. I'd like uh, Manfred and Grace Hodder. Where are you? This is Vanessa Hodder's parents. Could you just stand up and just say hello to everybody? All the way from Ottawa. All right. All right. Thank you so much. We love you. We play. We had the privilege of having time with them, and it was just been an absolute delight. May the Lord Jesus bless your trip back to Ottawa and send our love and greetings to Ottawa. Amen. Amen. And then secondly, uh, we have a precious family visiting us from Puebla, Mexico. I'd like uh, Arturo, Roxana, Aniela, and Abby, wherever you are, would you just stand up and say hello? Can we welcome them? Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. Amen. And not bad, eh? Not bad for an African. <laughs> but uh, Analia, would you just uh, wave to us? That's Analia. There we go. Analia is they're here because they're good parents, they're good family, they want to settle their daughter here. Analia will be here at PLBC, and we're so excited to have her. So. So everyone can go and meet Analia and her precious family. Thank you so much. Um, I am sure that you, like me, have noticed that post-pandemic, things have shifted. Things are different. Things have changed. Something happens, something I believe has happened in the heavenlies. And you know, I've come to find out that people are saying and doing the strangest things. It seems like that many people have forgotten how to love and respect one another. 
And I put it this way in a conversation of mine to someone this last week. I said something like this. I said, you know, my friend, it seems like that people's inside voice has now become their outside voice, and it's become rather cutting and uncomfortable. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm so glad. (laughs) But it seems as if the communities in which we live today, that people have forgotten to love and respect one another. But you know, God has not forgotten to love and respect us. God loves us. And however you may think things are or how futile things may be in your mind, I want you to know that in the mind of God, God is with you. God is for you for you, and God loves you. There's no question about that. And so this morning, what I'm uh, wanting to do is to focus on God's love, on agape. There are four Greek words in the New Testament about love, and the first one is agape. It is the God kind of love. It is the highest form of love. Agape is sacred. Agape is divine. Agape is the supernatural kind of love that we all need. Isn't that right, Lana? We need God's supernatural love today. I do, how about you? Okay, okay. But God hasn't forgotten you. And God hasn't forgotten this world. You may have a dim view about the world in which you live now, but God has not forgotten this world. God has not forgotten people that you don't like people that you don't associate with. God wants to like them, love them, and associate with them. He does already. So I just wanted you to know that this morning we're going to broach the subject, and I'm so grateful that Pastor Craig asked me to preach today as they enjoy time with their daughter and son-in-law. We bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to read the Scriptures today. And remember, when you see the word love, these Scriptures are agape. We're talking about one kind of love today, the God kind of love today, agape. So when I say agape, I'm meaning the God kind of love. Are we all together? Okay, so the the scriptures will come up on the screen, and uh, there's various, I've got four sections of scripture I'm going to read today. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. And aren't, isn't it wonderful, Anne, that we're friends of God? Hey, Linda, it's grand, eh? Friends of God. Oh, sorry, we continue. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, 
But I chose you and I appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Agape, love each other. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Why? Because God is love. That's why. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, here it comes, God lives in us, and, the, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his Holy Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone, oh, I love this. Are you ready? If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these, the Bible tells us, is love, agape the God kind of love, Andy, that you and I need every single day of our lives. You see, agape means living the way God commanded us to live. There is a way to live. It's the way that Jesus commanded us to live. We don't just do something willy-nilly. We don't just flutter around. No, there is a purpose in the heart of God for you to live and live well and to live for him. Indeed, amen. Love means living the way God commanded us to live. The Bible tells us, as you have heard from the beginning, his command is this, live a life of love. At 2 John 1 verse 6, God's heart was broken. He loved the world so much but it broke his heart to give his son as a sacrifice. And Jesus, the son of God, died a cruel death for us on the cross. This is agape. This is God's immeasurable, 
incomparable love for the entirety of humanity. That's the love of God. And that chain is the love in us because we are in God and God is in us because we have surrendered our lives to Jesus. Sorry, I'm shouting. I will calm myself. I don't want to shout. I, I just love Jesus so much. And as I was preparing for this sermon, I, I, I don't know, I wept most of the time. Because we're sinners, saved by the grace and the agape of God. And that should touch your heart. You and I, before we met Jesus, were not very nice. Hugh, would you agree with me? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm not picking on you because he wasn't very nice. <laughs> God's heart was broken. Jesus, the Son of God, you know what he did and we'll have communion at the end. He, he died a cruel death on the cross. Divine love comes from God. And let me remind you, Christian, For Christian believers, agape is the truest test of genuine faith. I wrestled over that this week. Yes, I think I'll say it again. For Christian believers, love is the truest test of genuine faith. Love is all about, life, I should say, is all about love. Think about it. Your life, it's all about love. Your childhood, your parents, and I know many of us were not loved like we should have been. But honestly, life is all about love, and God is love. I know God is a lot of things. He's light and life, and, but we're focusing on agape. Because God is love, the most important lesson, dear friends, the most important thing he wants us to understand is he wants you to learn here on earth how to love. I know every day I'm tested in my love. Every day. You know, the media is the message. We're called to live godly lives, but in the media, the media is the message, right? In the world today, all you hear through the media is the secular gospel of the world, the chit-chat of the world, yes? Yeah, it's true. Every single day we get bombarded with this and that. And they say, you've got to live like, you, like they live on television. You've got to live like they live on the movies. You've got to live when you read those books just like that. And the magazines you read just like that. No, no. We don't live just like that. We live godly lives. Why? Because God is in us. And we live a life with God. We walk with God. And we talk with God. And because love is the most important lesson, he wants you to learn on earth. He wants you to walk in it. You see, it is in loving that we're most like Jesus. So love is the foundation of every command he has given us, every command. Love conquers all. Love conquers all. 
Galatians 5.14 tells us that the whole law can be summed up in one command. Just one? Yep, one. Love others as you love yourself. Have you tried that recently? <laughs> Have you tried to love your neighbor as yourself? Or do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? You see, you cannot love. It's humanly impossible for you to love everyone. But through God, through Jesus, his agape, his supernatural love in you, you can love others. It's true. You cannot truly love without God. Now, it's easy to love the lovely. It's easy to love the beautiful people, whoever they are in your life. But you know what? Jesus never taught to us to love the beautiful people. He taught us to love everybody, even those who are unlovely. Margie, it's not easy. It's not easy. Because learning to love unselfishly is not an easy task. And why is it not? Because it absolutely runs counterclockwise, or it isn't totally the opposite to our self centered nature. Wow. Wow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, there are people that God puts in our pathway. You may not realize it, but when you say, when you say oh Lord, make me, break me, <laughs> make me a, a mature Christian, God says, thank you. And suddenly you've got this person coming in your life <laughs> that you would never be seen with in the light of day. Excuse me, I'm not sure how to frame that. <laughs> but every one of us has a certain type of person that we struggle with. Why? Because we're not all the same. We're all very different. And it doesn't matter who you are. If it's Pastor Mike, oh, yes, you love every. Someone said to me the other day, oh, Pastor Mike, oh, you don't struggle with this, Pastor Mike. You love everybody. I said, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I said, if I said yes, that would be a lie. I am human just like you. No, God sends people in my life to test me, to mature me, to discipline me, because a disciple is a disciplined one. And I've got to remember that God is love. So if you're struggling right now with a person that's in your life, you'd better get the victory. Do you know why? Because they won't go away until you get the victory. <laughs> and then it's the truth. And then guess what? You get the victory and then they go away and you say, oh no. I was just really getting to know them and appreciate them. All right. I was talking not too long ago to, see, love conquers all, my friend. If you love that person, love conquers all. M's, love conquers all. I was talking to someone not too long ago. They, 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 they are foster parents, and they received a little child into their home, one year old, in the first year of this child's life, all the child knew meals, infrequent meals, and life in a dark cupboard. And it came in, and this little kid was a blob. When I say a blob, a blob, a one-year-old was just a blob. Couldn't lift its head, couldn't lift its arms, was just a blob. And this family fed this baby a Christian family, they loved on this baby. 
They'd pass the baby from arm to arm and they'd pray over the baby and love the baby and cuddle the baby and love the, mo- love the baby more and more and more. And in one week, it lifted its head. And then later on, it was flinging his arms. Then later on, the baby was actually crawling a little bit on the carpet. The appetite improved. He was now whopping down the nutritional food that they were giving him. But he was loved and loved and loved. And today, I am told, just like two weeks ago, I am told that he's standing up with his hands on the sofa or a table. Love conquers all. It's wonderful. It's wonderful when someone is loved, they respond and they grow and they surprise you in a wonderful way. There's a story of a wonderful missionary. He was Canadian, actually, and he went to India. Mark Buntain, famous missionary. I learned about him when I was at Bible college many years ago. Mark Buntain went to India, and do you know what he did? He loved the people. He loved the people even more. And when he loved the people, the people then began to realize, oh, do you know what? Arma, he loves me. He loves me. And they loved him back. And sooner or even later, they received Jesus because of the love flowing through this great man of God. You see, when you love people, they're the most beautiful people on the face of the earth. I can honestly stand before you And say there have been people that have come across my path that I've said, oh Lord, no, please, no. And God said, you get your act together. You do and you be what I've called you to be. I love them now. I love them so. Only God can do that. I love them so much. I don't want them to go anywhere. Daniel and Karen Sunderland, when you leave in a couple of days' time, as we sent you out last week to Scotland, do you know what's going to happen? The Scottish people, in your eyes, are going to be the most beautiful people on planet Earth because agape lives in you. And when you see them, you're going to love them. And when you love them, they're going to change and they're going to ask you what's within you. And you're going to say, Jesus, and they're going to come to the Lord and know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because that's how it works. That's how it works. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Where am I? Oh, yes. Now, of course, God wants us to love everyone. There's no question about it, but I just saw something so new, something so fresh. I don't know if you realize this. I don't know if you've ever seen this. <laughs> no, you probably have. You say, oh, Mike, that's, that's old hat. But when I, I see now in the Scriptures that God, of course, wants us to love everyone. But guess what? The Scriptures tell us he particularly is concerned that we learn to love in his family, in the church. Really? Okay. Well, Paul tells us, he says, show special love for God's people. Yes, we're supposed to love everybody, but he says, hey, hold on a second. I want to bring your attention to something. Show special love for God's people. Wow. Paul even echoes the sentiment when he says in Galatians, 
when we have the opportunity to, to help anyone, we should do it. We should. Anyone. But we should give special attention to those who are in the family of believers. Wow. Why does God insist that we give special attention or special special anything or special love and attention to other believers? Why do they get the priority in loving? I think that's a valid question. Because God wants his family, his church. Because God wants his family to be known for its love more than anything else. This was a revelation to me. You mean more than evangelism? No, not more than evangelism. Pastor Mike, you mean more than evangelism, don't you? Nope. You mean more than miracles, signs, and wonders? Nope, not more than that. Not even that. You mean prophecy? No, not even prophecy. Agape is needed more than anything else. Why? Because everything else is a byproduct from agape. See, if you don't love, you can't live in God like he wants you to live, so you'll miss that opportunity because your mind says, nah, eh, disqualified, won't talk to him or her or whatever, okay? No, we have to be very careful. Jesus said, I'll love for one another. You know you're different, right? You're different. Look, you're different. Sorry to tell you that. <laughs> Michael, you're different. Phil, you're different. Annika, you're different. Jeet, you're different. What? How dare you? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just relax. You're not like other people because you have Jesus, and you're different. I, I just want to remind you that when you go to work, you shine like a light. And people say, whoa, what's, what's up with that guy? Or what's up with her? Like, whoa. You're different, David. You're different. Because you shine for Jesus. You carry a love and a respect for others from God working this way. From God working this way. See? See? That's how it works. Ever been to the counter, Tim Hortons, your bank, the superstore or whatever, and they say, oh, Michael, there's such a peace about you. Or, wow, Johnny, sir, you, you're, you're, you're different. By Franklin, I mean, come on now, what's up with you? Or, oh, sir, good lady, there's such a peace about you. Do you know what I say? I say, well, thank you, Sarah. She says, how does he know my name? Her name tag. <laughs> I say, well, thank you, Sarah. Can I tell you this? Yes, I am different. Because you see, what you're sensing now is the spirit of Christ in me reaching out to you. I don't have any problem saying that to anybody because it's the truth. It's the, I don't get too holy, Holy Spirit. I get, it's the, but it is the Holy Spirit of God in us reaching out and touching others. Okay, we must move on. You know, I, I say this a lot, but I'll say it again. I am personally, I'm totally convinced it wasn't just because of the miracles that people followed Jesus. Do you know what I think, Lee? 
I think it wasn't just because of the miracles. I think it was because Jesus loved the people. And the people knew that he loved them, so they followed him. See, people know when you love them. And then they'll open up and they'll follow you. It's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. So, in heaven, we will enjoy God's family forever, right? Absolutely right. In heaven, we will enjoy God's family forever. But first, we have some tough work to do here on earth to prepare ourselves for eternity of loving. And God trains us by giving us family responsibilities in his church. We're just a microcosm of his church, right? Here at uh, Horizon. But God wants you to be in regular close fellowship with other believers so you can develop the skill of loving. And one of the things we're going to be learning about this coming semester, and I'm not going to spill the beans, but I'm just so excited about it that Pastor Craig's going to mention a few things probably from next week, how we can build relationships in our congregation. It's just so precious. You see, I don't know if you realize this, but honestly, Joash, love cannot be learned in isolation. You cannot have fellowship with your sofa. I, and, and please, that's not a, an off-color remark or anything. There's some people that are shut-ins and they have to watch services from television, from monitors and so on. But honestly, we need people. We do. We need people. So we cannot, love cannot be learned in isolation. We have to be around people. And I, I, I have to say this, irritating people, frustrating people, okay? All right. Imperfect people. Because that's what God does. That's what God does. Well, I have three points, and we're not going to get through them. <laughs> Jen, what can I say? I tried. I tried, but I, I didn't want to rush today. So number one, the best use of your life is to live in agape. I want you to know it from the get-go as a Christian. The best use of your life is to live in agape because everything in Christianity flows out of that. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Love should be your top priority. And all the men shook in their seats. Did you feel the tremors when I said that? <laughs> oh, what, Mike? Yes, not your business. Agape should be your top priority. It should, your, should be your primary objective, your greatest ambition. And I know all the men are saying, uh-uh, no way. Oh, yes way. You see, love is not a good part of your life. It's the most important part of your life. Because if you want to be loved by God, you have to worship God. You have to walk with God. And God will bless whatever you do. So this is first and foremost. It took me a while to learn this. And I was even in the ministry. I was very busy in the ministry planting churches in Zimbabwe many years ago. I was away so much. Not good. God had to realign my thinking. So I know what I'm talking about. It's not good. Oh, Hey, guys, how you doing? You doing okay now? Just take a deep breath. There we go. The Bible says, let your love be your greatest aim. Wow. Relationships must have priority in your life above everything else. 
No. No, no, no. Yes. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, yes. Why do I say that? Because think about this. It's the truth. Life without love is really worthless. Life without love is really worthless. Do you know people that are not loved, they feel as if they're not loved? You know what they do, don't you? They pretty much go and take their lives because nobody cares about them, nobody loves them, no one has the time of day for them. Life without love is really worthless. You will shrivel up and die if you do not have life in love. And Paul makes this point. You know, I, 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 I reread this week that four out of the ten commandments deal with our relationship to God. Six out of the ten commandments deal with our relationship with people. But all ten of them deal with relationships. And you can only have a solid relationship when you love somebody. All right. I remember our children were small and, you know, like kids, they, and the parents, this is very important. From a very young age, you've got to disciple your children. You've got to teach your children. You've got to set boundaries. You've got to teach them about the love of Jesus and to love and respect their brothers and sisters and others. And we used to have what we called in kiddie language, before you go out this door, children, and I know my Michelle is in the house today, <laughs> my beloved daughter, she'll remember this. We'll say, now listen, children, you've got to have a happy heart and a kind heart. Let's teach, that's kitty language. You've got to love people, right? And you're not going through this door unless your heart is right. There was an attitude check. And then we'd all go to school, we'd try and, you know, be happy in the car. And, yeah. and some of them, you know, it took a while for them to understand, but they did. And I'm glad to say that all of our three children today are parents, they love the Lord, and they're following Jesus. It's a wonderful thing. So Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, for this is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. And as I was praying about this, I, the Lord just said, I want you to do some things. I want you, could you just close your eyes? And I want you to think of your neighbor, the one to the left, the one to the right, where you are living, where you are living. It's upstairs, downstairs, to the left, to the right, kitty corner, across the road. Your neighbor. Think of your neighbor. And I want you to see them in your mind's eye. And I want you to pray for them right now. In your heart, just say, Lord, old John, who lives kitty corner to me or whoever, would you touch his heart? Would you help me to love him? He's not an easy guy. He's so set in his ways or whatever. Would you do that now? Would you pray for God's help to love your neighbor? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for doing that. Would you continue to pray for your neighbor, neighbors, during your stay in your suburb, wherever you are? You see, my dear friends, relationships, not achievements or acquisition of things are what matters most in life. It's a loving relationship with a person. I've been a pastor for many years, 43 years. And I can honestly, honestly tell you, and I've been to many bedsides where people are dying. They don't have long left on this earth. Never once have I have they ever said, please bring my degrees. I want one last look. And I don't mean light of making light of this. It's just the truth. Oh, please, you know, oh, if I'd only spent more time at the office. No. Do you know what they all say? All of them. I wish I'd... I wish I'd loved my wife more. I wish I'd been kinder to my children. I wasn't very good. I'd been positive with my family. That's what they say. And do you know what they need? They need people around them that love them. That's what they need. But why wait till you die? Why wait till you die to tell somebody you love them? Oh, when I was growing up, you know. No, 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 no. Tell your children that you love them. Tell your brother. You know that old husky guy that you haven't seen for 15 years? Lives across the other side of the world. Phone him and tell him, brother, I love you. There'll be silence on the other side because he'll be crying. My brother never cries. You want to bet? Just do what I told you. People need to be loved, but you can only love through Jesus. Dear friends, today, if you really need to leave a legacy, leave a legacy of love. Really. You know, your sofa and all your wonderful things, the kids don't like them anyway. They're going to sell them and get the latest, greatest thing. I don't mean to be mean, but I'm at a stage of life where I, I see that. A lot. Oh, yeah, I remember old grandpa's chair, but we don't want it. Anyone want it? You see, one of the ways God measures spiritual maturity is by the quality of your relationships. That's a sober thought. Jesus said the way to love him do you want to really love Jesus today? I do. Well, here it comes. Jesus said the way to love him is to love his family and take care of their practical needs and your own. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. My children, our love should not be just words and talk. It must be true love, agape, which shows itself in action. You see, whenever you give your time, you're making a sacrifice 
And you know this, don't you? That sacrifice is the essence of love. Daniel, are you ready? I'm just about to close. We're going to break bread. We're going to have communion. I mean, you know this, don't you? That you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You, You can give. Yeah, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. For God so what? Loved. He gave. The best time, my dear friend, before Pastor Daniel takes over is to love now. Why is now the best time to express your love? Because you don't know how long you've got on this earth. That's why. Circumstances change. People die. Children grow up. You have no guarantees of tomorrow. If you want to express love, you'd better express it now. And I know as a man, we kind of wriggle in our seats when we hear such things. Knowing that one day you and I'll stand before God. So what do you need to do to love more? Well, I want to give an appeal to anyone who's watching and anyone who's here to know the love of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And if you haven't made your peace with God and received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I would heartily, heartily, ask you to please consider Jesus. Speak to somebody you know that knows Jesus and they can pray with you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Mike. I love you. Mean that. Mean that. Uh, if you, when you walked in, you didn't grab a communion cup, our wonderful ushers are at the back. You just pop your hand up. We're about to take communion. If you're watching online, uh, grab whatever you got around you. Uh, I was contemplating. I think a lasagna is both. It's kind of kind of like the, the red sauce and that. But I, I grab a bread, something, coffee will do. Uh, but if you don't have one, keep your hand up. Love to make sure you, you have a communion. First Corinthians chapter 11, we won't read it for the sake of time, but I would encourage you to maybe take a look at it. Right in the famous passage where Paul begins to lead us in communion, he actually deals with what Pastor Mike just talked about, about love. You see the church was following the law, the letter of the law, so to say, of what Jesus says, hey, when you do this, take communion. But in their obedience to Jesus, they had forgot their relationship with other people. So we see some people were eating, some were starving, some were getting drunk, some were doing this. And, and around love, and we love to talk around communion about the significance of the bread, and the significance of the blood and the covenant, which is fitting. But if we miss the kingdom and the culture to which we are welcomed into as those who partake in communion, that being people of love, doesn't matter what the bread means. Doesn't matter what the wine means or the juice. So this morning for those who are about to take communion, those online, those in the room, as much as this is a remembrance that Christ died for me when I did not deserve it. My sins, which deserved death to me, he took. As much as the, the juice reminds us of a line in the sand, a new covenant where we are now in relationship with Jesus, part of a different kingdom. This also reminds us what we're a part of. And as we take this this morning, 
Let this be a remembrance and a reminder that above everything else, you're meant to be a person of love because that's who Jesus was. That's what this means. This is a declaration that above my, my thoughts, above my emotions, above my struggles, above my passions, I am called to be a person of love and family like me. When you fall short of that, this is also a reminder that the blood says there is grace for you, not just to forgive you of your shortcomings, but to empower you to be a woman and a man of love. So as we take the bread, oh yeah, that's spilled. Look, maybe that's a little bit too accurate. Um, Jesus, we take the bread. We're reminded that your body was broken, self-sacrificed for us. And while we are so grateful that you did that for us, Lord, would you empower us to do the same for the brother and sister around us? Let's take your bread. So we take your blood of the new covenant that we now live in, born again, citizens of heaven. God, would this be a reminder that we are now called to be people of love. We thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. Would you empower us to live in light of it? In Jesus' name. Take the juice. Lord, we just thank you that something that can be so familiar to those who've grown up in church, being the love of God, can be heard afresh and still be transforming. We pray you'd be with us this week. Would you show us and empower us to be people of love, in Jesus' name, amen. We can head it off to the tech team and for those online, for those in the room. We love you so much. Wow, what an incredible service. Uh, a powerful message. So glad that you could join us and watch and participate with us today. If you want to find out any more about Horizon or check out more of what we do and what we have, you can follow us on social media. Give this video a like. Um, check out more of our videos on our YouTube channel. Check out our website. And tune back in next week for our next Sunday live stream. See you later.